So in this lesson, we're analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. That's right, we're actually going to get to graph the things now. So uh, we've got three objectives here. The first one, we're going to approximate that x intercepts the zeros of a polynomial function using a graphing utility, a graphing calculator. Sure, so far we've done it algebraically. Now, here's a complete cheat. It is just plug it into the calculator and let's have the calculator find out where it touches the x-axis. Number two, we're going to use uh, the calculator again. We're going to locate this stuff called local minimums and maximums, usually called relative extrema. That's like uh, some calculus terminology of polynomial functions. Like, where does it go? Well, how high does it go? How low does it go? And then finally, put these things together and let's graph some polynomial functions. Notice it says, keyword there says sketch. And that's what we're going to do. We're not, we're not looking for uh, perfect accuracy. We're just going to get the uh, general look, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and in behavior for those graphs. All right. So first objective, using the graphing calculator in order to find the x-intercepts of our polynomial function. And uh, if you look in the background there, you see the space shuttle. And uh, I thought this was a, a pretty appropriate picture for zeros, x-intercepts. So um, if you think of the launch of a rocket, or you think of the launch of the, um, of the space shuttle, uh, an x-intercept or a zero would be where this thing is on the ground. And right now, currently, it's on the ground. And uh, apparently, it's always going to stay there since that program got canceled. OK. Anyway, so let's look at a couple of warm-up activities. I'm going to find the minimum or maximum point for this function. All right, so let's do a little bit of math here. Let's remember that um, if this is in standard form, I'm just basically looking for the vertex. So I use the formula x is equal to negative b over 2a. My b is already negative, so it's going to be positive 6 over 3 times a 2, not a 3, 2 times. Uh, there we go. That is the number 2. No, it isn't. Now it is. Okay, so 6 over 6, which is 1. Is that the maximum or minimum point? No. We've got to plug it back in and see. So y is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 2. So I get a 3 minus 6, which is negative 3, plus 2 is negative 1. So I have a vertex that's at 1, negative 1. But my minimum or maximum point is at negative 1. Which one is this? Well, since this a value is positive, we know we've got ourselves a beard, which makes this a minimum point. So let's take a look here at the graph. There it is, and uh, exactly where I told you it was going to be, at 1, negative 1. And that vertex point marks the minimum point of my, on that graph. OK? OK, so now let's find the x-intercepts for this. So x-intercepts, I'm going to plug 0 in for y, and then solve it for x. Uh, I've already checked. I did my checking on this, and these things, it's not factorable. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula on this. So x is going to be equal to negative b, so 6 plus or minus square root of b squared, 36 minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, which is another 6. So underneath the square root, we got 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. 36 minus 24 is 12. x is equal to 6 plus or minus square root 12 over 6. Square root of 12, 12, and 2 and 6, 2 and 3, that's 2 root 3, 2 root 3. And I can divide everything by 2, so x should be equal to 3 plus or minus root 3 over 3. Lots of 3's there. Yeah, totally irrational ones. So uh, here are those two points. Those are my two x-intercepts, or zeros, if you will. OK. So um, on both of these examples, what we looked at was kind of some review on a parabola. It was pretty easy to find the minimum point or the maximum if it was the other way around. And we have uh, the algebra that we can easily find the x-intercepts.
Okay, so now whenever we put it together with polynomials, these things get a little bit more complicated. Um, the, lo the minimums and maximum points, like, I don't have a formula for them. And the x-intercepts, as you already saw, well, we're going to use probably the rational zero theorem to find those. Okay, so zeros, real zeros, are x-intercepts, and they come in two flavors. The first kind are rational ones, and in order to get them, we use the rational zero test and we uh, theorem, and we, we test them out with synthetic division. If they're irrational, we have to break it down to a quadratic and then use the quadratic formula, and that's what I did in the last example. Okay, and this last one, irrational ones, alternatively, we can use our graphing calculator and then use the zero feature of that graphing calculator in order to find those approximate values. And um, that's what we're about to do. Okay, so here are some instructions for approximating zeros on your graphing calculator. So let me uh, speed read through this for you. You ready? <laughs> Number one, two, zero. Select two zero from the calculate menu. The current graph is displayed with left bound in the bottom left corner. Press up arrow or down arrow to move the cursor to the function you want to find a zero. Number three, press left arrow or right arrow or enter a value to select the x value for the left bound of the interval and then press enter. A right arrow, colored in black, indicator on the graph, graph screen shows the left bound. Right bound is displayed in the bottom left corner. Press left arrow or right arrow or enter a value to select the x value for the right bound. Then press enter. A right arrow, I that's left, indicator on the graph screen shows the right bound. Guess is then displayed in the bottom left corner. Look at the picture. Okay, number four. Press left arrow or right arrow or enter a value to select a point near the zero of the function between the bounds and then press enter. More pictures. The cursor is on the solution and the coordinates are displayed. Ta da! Straight from the manufacturer's mouth. Okay, so rather than uh, really writing all that stuff down, let me go through an example and then, uh, well, maybe you'll see it after that. So here's our first example. But let me pause for a second. Let's make sure that you're actually doing this. Let's make sure that you have a graphing calculator. If you have your own, turn that sucker on. If you do not, then let's go to my website and let me show you how to download this to your computer. All right, so I want to make sure that you have yourself a graphing calculator for this lesson. If you have your own, hey, ignore this part of the video. For everybody else, uh, we're on lesson 5.8, so if you navigate to that part of the website, right down the middle here, here's a whole bunch of graphing calculator stuff. So if you have a PC, click on the picture of the graphing calculator. There's some instructions on how to um, open that thing up on your PC. Okay. If you have a Mac, then click the big old smiley face Mac icon, and uh, the Mac instructions are right down below. Okay open that thing up and then you'll have yourself a nice graphing calculator to do the rest of this lesson. Okay, so we're going to first turn on this calculator here. Here we go. Turn it on, go to y equals, and let's type in our equation. So 4x, got to use the caret for the fifth power. You have to scroll out of it and then plus 12x to the fourth, scroll out of it, minus x, minus 3. Okay, I hit enter on that. Now, instead of just going to uh, the graph menu, let's go to zoom. And our favorite one is zoom standard, number 6. Zoom standard goes from negative 10 to positive 10 on both of these axes. All right, so take a look. The first one looks like it's at negative 3. It looks like it crosses exactly through negative 3. So uh, let me just confirm that by looking at the graph. That second, or the table, second graph. And right there, nope, that's not right. Negative 3 is exactly on 0. So there's one of our values. So let's go back to the graph menu. So I'm going to write here x is equal to negative 3. Okay, let's pull up the graphing calculator again. Now we have to find this one. So this is the way we get to it. We go second trace for the calculate menu. Take a look at those menu items. Which one does it make sense we're going to find? That's right, number 2, 0. So pick that one. Scroll down to it and hit enter. Okay, now it's going to ask us where to find that 0. Your calculator is not really doing mathematics to find it. What it's doing is it's looking at every single point that's on the screen and then finding where the y value is equal to zero. So you have to tell it where to look. 
what you want to do is you want to bring the cursor where it says left bound to the left side of the first zero. And the one that we're looking at right now is this one. You can either use your little arrow, see there's a little spider key on there, and you can move it to the left or to the right, or you can type in a number. I know that this is in between, I can see it from the screen, in between a negative one and a zero. So I can just type in negative one for the left bound. For the right bound, I can type in zero, hit enter. And for the guess, you don't have to play that game. It's just asking, well, what's a convenient place for me to start? If you wanted to scroll through and play that game, you can. Otherwise, just hit enter and it'll still find it for you. So, displayed at the bottom of the screen, there's our other zero. It's about negative 0.707. So here's our next one. It is at negative 0.0. Nope. Erase. 707. Okay, one last one. We've got one more on the right side. It's a positive value. So what are the steps again? Second, trace for the calculate menu. We're going to choose number two, zero. Now this one's in between zero and one, so I could just type in zero, hit enter, one, hit enter, and you can guess if you want to or just hit enter again. And Oh, look at that. It's the same value as before, only positive. Okay, so I'm going to just make this plus or minus 0 0.707. So here are my approximate zeros, my approximate x-intercepts. And um, there's three of them here. Wait a minute. This degree is 5. What does that mean? Well, that means that two of the zeros must have been what kind? imaginary. And of course we're not going to be able to find those uh, with the graphing calculator. We're just going to be able to find the real ones where they cross the x-axis. Alright, there's a couple of exercises for you to try in the next video.